Good day grade 12s. My name is Viola from the Distinction Bound Student and I'm delighted to present today's possible essay number 4. Cardin did the first three possible essays and today I'll cover Macroeconomic Objectives essay and it goes as follows. Discuss in detail Macroeconomic Objectives. 26 Marks. Governments have always had general objectives for the macroeconomy. These objectives are normally referred to as the state's macroeconomic objectives, here listed are South Africa's. Let us explore the state's macroeconomic objectives. Cardin came up with a FIP, which is a mnemonic for macroeconomic objectives. Viola, it's not IFIP, it's IFEP. IFEP. Oh, got it. I won't be able to pronounce that. Anyways, let's proceed. It will definitely help you in the exam. E stands for economic growth. F stands for full employment. E stands for exchange rate stability. P stands for price stability. E stands for economic equity. Let us now look at each of the five macroeconomic objectives in depth. We will start with economic growth. Economic growth as most of us know refers to an increase in the production capacity of a country. Remember we already covered how economic growth is measured. We use real GDP and not nominal GDP and I believe we know why. If not, I'll link a video that explains the difference. Please like and subscribe to our channel. Also turn on the notification bell for you to get notified each time we post. South Africa targets 4-5% to economic growth. The SA government wants this because of the wealth of benefits it brings such as increasing material living standards. The government today stresses the importance of sustainable economic growth, which is economic growth that can continue over time and does not endanger future generations' ability to expand productive capacity. This can be achieved if increases in aggregate supply matches increases in aggregate demand. Government tries to achieve economic growth that can match trend growth, which is the expected increase in potential output over time. It is essentially a measure of how fast an economy can grow without generating inflation. Government is now seeking economic growth that does not heavily deplete non-renewable resources and resources that do not damage the environment. Economic growth leads to economic development. You can watch the video we made on economic growth and development. I'll link it down below. Next up is full employment. South African government aims for full employment which is a situation where those willing and able to work can find employment at the going wage rate or create employment for themselves. This does not mean everyone in the population is employed. If government successfully encourage a high proportion of people to be economically active, this should raise the productive potential of the economy and reduce the cost of state benefits. Next is exchange rate stability. South Africa pursues stable exchange rates to attract foreign capital. The central bank may increase or decrease the money supply to maintain this rate. Stable exchange rates generally are viewed as favorable. Next is price stability. The fourth macroeconomic policy objective is to achieve low stable inflation. This does not mean inflation at 0%, but a low and consistent rate of inflation. SARB's inflation target is between 3% and 6%. South African government aims for this because it can bring benefits, such as enabling firms to reduce their costs by not raising wages with inflation. Lastly we have economic equity. The redistribution of income through tax and benefits may be done in order to ensure that everyone has access to the basic necessities or in order to correct what is seen as an equitable distribution of income. The government transfers some income from the rich to the poor, but not so much that it damages incentives so that work and enterprise are discouraged. Government will also want to avoid making living off benefits more attractive than working. That's it with our essay. As easy as that and as short as the video was, I've given you 22 points which can earn you 44 marks. Remember the main part is 26 marks, so from the 22 points that I gave you, you only need at least 13. Remember you also get marks for your headings. How then do people fail? It's still a mystery to this day. Since it's difficult to explain how people fail economics, we then conclude that such people deserve lunch. Next essay will be on public sector and it says discuss in detail the reasons for public sector failure. 26 marks. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also hit the notification bell for you to get notified every time we post new content to our channel. We are also giving away the Distinction Bound student t-shirts to people who buy more than 10 books. At the moment we have the following textbooks, Economics Grade 10, 11 and 12 plus Business Studies Grades 11 and 12. We are looking forward to adding more books to our catalog. 
Remember our books come in two versions, complete and no answers versions. Complete versions have answers and no answers versions do not. Thank you so much for your support. See you in the next video. God bless. Thank you.